Hello, Capricorn. Welcome to your bonus reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. If you're watching this, this reading was meant to find you. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Yeah, look at that wheel of fortune. This is very serendipitous. Um, this, I think, is a, well, it's a pot of gold. I think this is um, a big bonus coming your way, okay? Um, this feels like you're somebody who trusts in timing, you know? You trust in spirit. You trust in the universe. You trust that things are going to flow the way they're going to flow, and they're going to work out, right? Um, it's kind of like we, we believe everything happens for a reason, even if we don't really know the reason, right? We know that everything is sort of meant to be a certain way, even though we don't know why, right? And that's trust. Trust is, is the idea that, um, you know, uh, things are happening for a reason, that there is a structure, an order, or a plan to the universe, to our lives. And we're trusting in that fact, even though we don't really know the plan, okay? I think Spirit has big, plan, big plans for you. Um, let's take a look at some more cards, right? This is Jupiter Energy, Wheel of Fortune, Expansion, Growth, Prosperity. It is divine timing. This is the cosmic timepiece, right? It's Spirit's wristwatch. And it's saying, yeah, it's Capricorn o'clock right now. Yeah. Let's see how this is going to play out for you, okay? You're somebody who is uh, definitely uh, ambitious. You're, you definitely trust in spirit, too, you know? There is that Eight of Wands. We have an Eight of Cups. We have a Nine of Swords. We have a Prince of Cups. Interesting. And there's the universe itself. Wow. So I feel like you're sort of, this is taking you in a situation, um, in, into a better direction, out of a situation that you really don't want to be here, trust me, right? And you know that because you've been here and I think you're still kind of recovering from that, whatever this was. But let's not focus too much on this negative, okay? Let's look at what's going on in this positive direction. You have the Wheel of Fortune and the universe, right? This is expansion and this is... Um, this is what you are expanding into. It is infinite. Okay? This is, a, this is a big bonus. This is really good. Okay? This is sort of spirit giving you um, a little bit of a boost in your growth, in your, in your life, in your progress. Um, we could really be talking finances here, right? With the, especially with that Jupiter energy. Very, very prosperous, right? If there is anything, Capricorn, that you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, Please let me know. Let's put the rest of our cards on the table and then we'll get into this reading. There's the death card. There's a princess of swords, the hanged man, and the high priestess. The hanged man and the high priestess, look at them. They look like mirror images of each other, don't they? They look so, so similar to me. Um, they really do look like mirror images, both with a similar gesture, right? But one is sort of, um, the hanged man is kind of um, accepting what is below. Accepting, it's kind of, to me, this feels like a very, almost nihilistic, almost a fatalistic kind of card, right? Just kind of saying, I give up. Kind of saying, there is no hope. Uh, kind of saying, um, I'm just doomed, right? This is that doomed feeling. Okay. Okay. Um, this is also, it's a very magical card, this one, because it is a card of suffering. It's a card of sometimes a situation that we have placed ourselves into, okay? Nobody's forcing us to do anything. Um, where we have sacrificed and we have suffered and we have given of ourselves to something else. 
And I think now it's time, really, for that hanged man to, um, to, to turn things around, to come out of that, right? Coming out of this Eight of Cups, Nine of Swords situation. Spirit's giving you a boost. Spirit is taking you by the hand and saying, no, let's turn ourselves upwards this way. Now you can really see how similar those cards look. They're both triumphing now. They're both accepting the world as it is, accepting the divine grace. This is a card of accepting suffering, accepting fate. This is also the card of self-sacrifice. This is the card that says, when you have a sick kid, you're gonna, set, you're gonna give of yourself. You're gonna sacrifice any kind of personal well-being uh, or personal considerations to take care of that kid. This is someone with very little concern for themselves doing what they need to do. It's a very magical energy, okay? And I feel like this is, the, this is the obstacle for you because maybe you're prone to doing this more than you really need to, you know? That you are kind of a giving and selfless person, but I think Spirit's trying to tell you, here's something for you. Here's a bonus. Here's a reward. Here's a pot of gold for you. You take it. You turn yourself around this way and you accept it. This is the card of accepting the suffering that life brings us, right? But it's also the card, it can be, especially in the attitude of the high priestess, accepting the blessings that the universe gives us too. You're so good at, at, at sort of acquiescing and accepting suffering. You know, life has, bad things happen to us. Uh, bad things happen around us. You are familiar with that, with these two cards. Okay. And it is a very wise and a very mature thing to do, is to kind of, to acknowledge that yes, light, there is suffering in the world, Bad things are going to happen to me, right? And I have to accept that. And with that hanged man, it's kind of like we're, we're accepting what the universe is providing to us because we trust. Everything happens for a reason. There is a divine plan. Even though I don't know the reason, I don't know the plan, right? We accept that side of life. Let's accept the blessings too. Let's accept the good stuff with equally open arms. Yeah, because this is about the good stuff here. This is about that Wheel of Fortune, okay? Let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. The Factor Infinite and Unknown. It's going to go right here with Jimbo, the Lizard King, a.k.a. Mr. Lizard. And we're not going to look at that card until the end, but if you want to help me predict that card, let's use our intuition. Let's get back to that interactive style of readings, right, where you can help me predict that card because I guarantee... The more you do it, the better you'll get. Okay. All right. Let's take a look around the room. We've got some major arcana. Oh, yes, we do. A lot. One, two, three, four, five. Wheel of fortune into the universe. Okay. Your spirit has given you a boost of expansion, a boost of growth. Okay. In every direction in your life to fill up a little bit more of the empty space. Okay. Maybe Spirit has given you more to do, given you more opportunities, kind of saying, well, you wanted to be busy? Okay, you're going to be busy. Oh, you're going to be busy, right? Um, you know, you wanted, uh, you wanted a sense of direction? Okay, how about eight directions, right? I feel like your life is going to get a lot busier. Um, you're also kind of, you're in this energy, I think, where you, you're really looking for for things to do to apply your energy. And this is Spirit's way of saying you're, you're going to grow in every direction. Your personal life, professional life, your, your education, your, it's really um, nine of cups, right, for the mystery card, you think? Uh, it's going to be physically and financially abundant and prosperous. There's going to be growth, right? And mental, emotional, and spiritual, creative. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very wholesome growth. It's... Um, it's a perfect circle. Shout out to James. It's a perfect circle. It's not an oblong pear shape kind of thing. Your life is expanding in a lot of ways. Okay, so get ready for um, an improvement in your interpersonal relationships. Get ready for an improvement in your business opportunities or your money making opportunities. Be ready for a lot of green lights in a lot of places. You're gonna be pretty busy, right? But it's gonna be that kind of busyness um, that is very satisfying. 
and it's kind of a blessing. You know, it's kind of like um, when you're, yeah, I used to deliver pizzas, right? And um, I was a delivery driver at a, at a pizza restaurant. And um, there'd be some really slow nights, you know, and the other drivers, they were, you know, usually younger than me, right? I've always kind of been the older, the old, one of the old ones. Um, and they'd be like, oh, this is great. There's like nothing to do. It's so, so slow tonight. This is awesome. Like we can just sit here all night. And I would always kind of think to myself, and sometimes I'd say this to the kids, you know, um, I was in my 20s. I wasn't that old. But I'd say, you know what? It's a blessing to be busy. Because think about it. We're going to be super busy. Our time's going to go by really fast. And we're going to walk out of here with a wad of money from tips. Yeah, it'd be easier and less work to just sit here and eat pizza and watch the ball game on TV for a few hours until the end of our shift. But is that really what you want to do? You know? I'd rather be busy. I'd rather be super busy and f one, feel productive, feel like my time was well spent. You know, it feels good at the end of the day to be like, man, I really put in effort here. And of course, you know, we get, we get the money at the end of the night. You know, it's a, it's a tip, um, you know, kind of, kind of thing. Anyway, delivering pizzas. I had so much fun delivering pizzas. But anyway, um, maybe that is your eight of wands, right? The blessing of being busy. Yeah. And it's uh, any kind of a business. It's just like, it's good to be busy. You got now, like the business has been slow, not a lot of customers. Suddenly now it's going to hit. There's going to be a ton of customers. You're going to have a line around the block, right? For whatever you're making, whatever you're cooking up, Capricorn, you know. So I think this is a lot of very, very serendipitous moments for you a lot of green lights, so many that it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to say, oh, it's just luck. Oh, it's just coincidence. You know, it's not. It's going to be undeniably some grace. Okay. I like that a lot. Um, so we have a lot of majors anyway. We've got the Wheel of Fortune into the universe. We've got the death card, right? The death card is... Um, either going to be literally suffering or literally miracles, okay? And it really depends on how you look at this process of transformation because life is progressing, life is moving on, life is going forward, time does not slow down for anybody. And we could either be suffering and acquiescing in this energy over here, where it's slow, where things stagnate, where we're starting to lose hope, where it's just, it's painful, you know? Um, or we could look at life as saying, okay, you know, I'm going to take advantage of all these opportunities that I have. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm not going to waste any time suffering unnecessarily. You know, they, they say that old phrase, pain is, um, pain is guaranteed, right? Pain is required, but suffering is optional, okay? And it's really difficult to live that way, but we can, right? We can at least try. And that to me is pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, getting out of this hangman energy and getting into this receptive, receiving the abundance, receiving the grace and the love and the prosperity and the miracles of life and um, letting go as quickly as possible of pain and suffering. We notice ourselves starting to suffer. Let's just, let's get busy. Let's do something, you know, let's work, right? And uh, the death card, of course, is this process of transformation that takes place over time. It's very slow and steady growth. Of course, we see a big boost from spirit here. This is a big, you know, rocket booster kind of thrust in your slow and steady energy. I almost wonder if this is going to be a, a tower card in our mystery card. We got fire. We've got water. We've got air. Right? And the earth energy that we see, I'm, I'm kind of just saying that these major arcana energies, the the universe and the Wheel of Fortune are, are pretty much the earth energy, especially the universe, because it is the, the manifested world, right? It is the potentially manifested world, I guess. It is the space, right, into which we can manifest any kind of reality we want. How do we want this wheel to grow? How do we want this life to move, this wheel to turn? Okay, which way, which direction are we turning the wheel here? This is the space. This is the opportunity. That is spirit's way of kind of, um, of clearing the field for you and saying, plant your crops. 
I got, I've gotten rid of all the weeds and all the big boulders and all the nonsense. I've cleared the field. It's fertile ground for you now. But you got to do the work. You've got you to sow the seeds, you know. And I think it really is going to be such a blessing in your life right now. So the Eight of, the eight of Wands is a lot of opportunities, a lot of busyness. It's going to happen quickly. Um, to me, it feels like this is going to be um, a sudden rush. Like it's almost like suddenly now there's just a line out the door. Suddenly now people are calling you day and night to hire you for something or everybody's wanting, you know, there's just a lot suddenly, right? And that feels very good. It can feel overwhelming. It can feel like I don't have eight arms. I can't keep up with all this busyness, you know? So be ready for that. Maybe this is a card that says, you know, things are going to start happening very quickly. Prepare for that. You know, start, th can start thinking of a strategy of how you're going to deal with a sudden surge of, of business, of clientele, of customers, or whatever it is that you're doing, whatever you're focused on, right? When suddenly there's a lot of things for you to take care of, do you need to ask for help? Do you have to hire somebody? Do you have to get a day planner kind of organizer kind of thing? Or get out your Google Notes or your, um, your Todoist or your Evernote, right? Make, some, make some, some schedules, right? Stay organized. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is a lot of activity. Okay. And I think that what Spirit is bringing you with this Wheel of Fortune is a lot of doors, a lot of different directions that you can go. Suddenly now it's Spirit saying, okay, you, you want to go that way? You want to go north, south, east, west, or any place in between? Yeah, doors open. The opportunity is there. You can go through one or more or all of these doors, if you wish. Spirit's giving you green lights every direction, 360. I should spin around in my chair, but I'm afraid I'd knock something over. Um, that's really good. I mean, we have to be ready for that, though, because sometimes the eight of, sometimes the eight, and that's a blessing, right? That's a good problem to have. But sometimes the eight of wands can be a little bit of anxiety when we have too many options, too many doors. If we're pulled in, in every direction at once, what happens? We sort of split apart, right? Um, if we're trying to, to move in every direction at once, we end up staying still. We end up sort of with the jazz hands problem, you know, tap dancing on the shag carpet, right? Um, because we, we can't really decide. It's like we have too many options, like a kid in a candy store. I don't know what candy to buy. Uh, I can't buy everything, right? Um, so we have to be a little bit selective and a little bit discerning, yeah. Um, and that kind of brings us up here to the Prince of Cups. This is a Scorpio energy, right? Um, Scorpio might be a significant, um, well, especially with the Death card too, both Scorpio energies. I think you should watch the Scorpio reading, whatever that, um, the, the most recent Scorpio one is, okay? Whatever that placement is for you, I would check out that reading. But the Scorpio energy, the Prince of Cups, is a fixed water energy. It is being authentic. It is knowing what you really desire in life and pursuing that with everything that you've got. Okay? Especially when, you know, let's say that you have a very committed life, you know what you want, you're on your path, you've got this aspiration, and suddenly you win a million dollars. Are you just going to go crazy with that million dollars? Or are you going to apply that million dollars to your path, to your sense of purpose? Are you going to stay true to yourself? Right? More often than not, people get this big win, this big bonus, jackpot, million dollars thing, and they, they totally forget about their good intentions. They totally lose themselves. They forget what their mission is. They forget what they care about. Right? Suddenly now it's just houses and boats and cars and, you know, vacations and a lot of candy, right? Whatever. Um, rather than applying this, in a very focused way to what means something to you, to what your aspirations are. So this card's up here because you're someone that wants to stay true to themselves. You're somebody that is an authentic person. And all the money in the world is, is not going to change who you really are, what your central truth is. 
or what you believe in the most in life, right? Money will change us, yes. But it's not going to change who you are at your core. You're still going to have the same heart, you know, the same, um, I think the same desire it may just be on a higher scale. It may just be a little bit larger, um, may just be a little bit more lavish. You might be wearing a little more jewelry while you do it. Um, but you're staying true to yourself, okay? And I think that's really part of this universe card. Spirit is giving you an open doorway to infinite space. You don't just have a little quarter acre lot. You got the whole countryside, right? What do you want to build? What are you going to do here? So we could really be talking about scaling something up big time. If it's your business, if it's your family, your life, your education, whatever it is, it's going to grow exponentially. Okay. Um... And this, this represents the potential for growth. How much space there is. Now, how much space you're going to fill, well, that's, that's sort of up to you, right? Uh, or, and what your particular focuses are. But I feel like this is sort of, we're talking the scale of things, you know? Because the Jupiter energy is very expansive. Things are going to grow. Things are going to get bigger. Okay? And, um, well, how's infinite space for big? right? You want to know big. You try to, try to imagine how small we are as human beings and how big any star is out in space, right? How big our own, how, how, how big our own planet really is, you know, it's, it's huge. Or the, you know, the moons or other, the gas giants, right? Mind-bogglingly big. And sometimes if you're Maybe you're staring at the night sky. I think you're somebody that like that you do like to stargaze, right? Sometimes staring at the night sky, especially on a a new moon, especially on a very dark night, away from the city lights and all the light pollution, um, you can almost you can almost catch a glimpse of that astronomical feeling. You know. Um, Sometimes when I was younger, again, in my 20s, right? I did a lot of things in my 20s. Um, you know, I would have these moments. I would go, I'd go in the middle of the night, three in the morning, I'd go up to the top of the mountain, Mount Hamilton, um, uh, down in the San Jose, California area when I lived down there. I would drive up to the top of that place and I would find a clearing where I could just look at the stars. And sometimes I would get vertigo. Sometimes I would just, I'd fall down from this feeling, this overwhelming feeling of we're just ant-sized. We're just a little grain of sand in this vast, infinite universe. And um, sometimes it, it, it's startling, you know, to have that kind of perception of the awe and splendor of the universe. And I, I feel like Spirit's showing you that and then saying, you've got to rise, you've got to grow to fill a little bit of this universe. There's plenty out there. There's room for everybody and everything that you can possibly imagine. You know, internal space as well as external space. If you can imagine it, if you can create that inside of you in a vision, right, in your imagination, it can become a reality. That's part of our, our Prince of Cups too. Prince of Cups is that artist inside. This is the one that says you have this intense imagination and there's no limit to how you can manifest that in the, in the real world. Do not give up on your dream, okay? Now, these cards over here, I don't really want to talk about them, but the Nine of Swords, cruelty, the Eight of Cups is a feeling of, of hopelessness, a feeling of life is getting worse, the water is draining, the satisfaction is draining, that your creative water energy is draining from these cups. Okay, and that's kind of the suffering. These two cards, definitely suffering. That's hanged man energy. Okay, we don't want to linger here. The Nine of Swords, I don't know what happened to you. I don't know if this was, um, you know, something in your past, maybe recent, you know, ish, relatively recent. Something that kind of um, attacked your dream, a dream that, that didn't pan out, okay? It's some pain here, definitely pain, right? 
we can let this pain go and we can accept the blessings that are happening right now, all these doors that are opening for you and you can move forward or we could hanged man linger in that pain and we can stay here and we can suffer. Okay? And it's really, the choice is truly yours. But it's going to be very difficult for you to ignore all of this synchronicity that's taking place in your life. The eight of cups underneath everything, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? doesn't matter. Either way, it's half, right? Half is the reality. Whether we're looking at it as half full or half empty is really hanged man, high priestess sort of problem that we've been talking about. But it's perspective, right? We could accept that, oh, I'm only, I only get half a glass of water in life, that's it, right? Or we could be open to say, hey, you know, I've got half a glass already and I've got, I've got room for more in here, right? And so we're open to that. We can either lament what we, what we have or, or don't have, or we can, we can embrace um, what, we're, what we're being given or what we're achieving, right? So this is, um, this is kind of, to me, it feels like a little bit of misplaced, um, misplaced energy. Because it doesn't matter which way you look at it. Half full, half empty. It doesn't matter. It's still half. Let's, let's take the, the miracles that are happening. Let's embrace the blessings now. And let's go. Let's fill this cup up. In fact, we realize with the universe card, there is no cup. It is infinite expansion. There's no limit to how full your life can feel to how satisfied you can feel. Okay. This is, a, this is here the feeling of dissatisfaction. This is the feeling of it's hopeless. Life can't, can't, is not going to get any better. It can't, it won't, it's not, right? Well, we're changing that with our major arcana here. Yeah. Now let's talk about the path of the serpent. And as we talk about your general energy, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It's free to subscribe and it, it helps the channel. I really do appreciate that. Okay. Your general energy is this death card. Death card's about letting go. Letting go of that nine of swords, whatever it was. Letting go of suffering. Letting go of unnecessary pain and suffering. Okay. Now, maybe pain is required, but suffering is optional. Let's let go of it all as quickly as we can. Because we can reclaim some of that energy. Some of that water energy, right? We can reclaim the water, we can purify it, and we can use it to move forward. We can apply it to, a, um, to our continued growth because, you know, time marches on, right? Um, we can't slow things down or stop things, and we certainly can't reverse things. We can't go back in time and undo what happened. There's no point in dwelling on it, shedding too many tears over something, right? We have to grieve. We have to honor how we feel, yes. But there's a time where we have to, re and I think with the Wheel of Fortune, right? This is that cosmic timepiece, Spirit's wristwatch, right? There is a time when we're going to have to say, I'm done. I'm coming out of this period of mourning and I'm going to embrace the future. I'm going to have a say in my destiny. I'm going to stay true to myself and it, it doesn't hurt that spirit is opening some doors for you, giving you some green lights, giving you some bonus energy, right? A boost. Um, so we realize that we don't want to waste any more time. Okay. And we can reclaim a lot of the energy that we've been devoted to suffering, and now we can devote it to joy, to creating joy, to, to allowing more blessings into our lives. You're undergoing a constant process of transformation, right? Whatever you water the plant with, that's how it's going to grow. Let's not water our own souls with suffering. Let's water it with joy. Let's, let's bring in some of this love. Okay, because then we know that we are moving in a direction that we really, that, that we really want, that we're becoming somebody that we really want to become, and our life is growing in a positive way. Okay, now the next card, 
our princess of swords. Um, princess of swords, I kind of chuckled because back when I first started doing readings on this channel a couple years ago, I think almost three years now, been about two and a half. Um, the first readings that I started doing for you, Capricorn, there was always this air sign person that was causing mischief in your life. I think it's like a family member that you kind of work with or you did work with at, a, at some point or they either they interned for you or they, they lived with you for a while or they just kind of hung around your shop or something. But they were always sort of getting in trouble and making your life kind of stressful, you know. I kind of wonder if this person's back in some ways. Um... Uh, because it was always sort of the princess of, of sorts that we would see, you know. But I think this card in your environment is talking about your relationships, and it is maybe talking about this younger female energy in your life, okay? Um, and uh, I feel that this card, though, is, is about you learning and about you needing to, needing to focus your mind on something else. Because we're in that nine of swords, we're in that suffering energy, we're in that hanged man, despair and lamentation. It's kind of like all this busy stuff is happening in your life, it gives you something to put your mind to. And that's, I think that's very important when we're trying to continue this transition and we're trying to sort of flip the hanged man around into a high priestess. Um, all these things happening in your life right now is going to need your attention. And you're going to have to figure things out. And you're going to have people to talk to, places to go, phone calls to make, emails to write. You're going to have paperwork to do, to fill out or whatever, and um, problems to solve. Things that you have to learn, right? You're going, to, you're going to have to really engage your mind here. And I think that is going to be very, very good for you. To have something to engage your mind in, in figuring out that's not suffering and lamentation and despair. That is learning new things, growing, figuring it out, um, maybe hiring some people, maybe getting your friends and family. Maybe that younger female air sign person that was causing mischief a couple of years ago is, is ready to do some hard work now, you know. Um, because this is going to require some organization. Yeah. It's sort of like business is booming now. Okay, I got to get some of my friends or family members in here to help me do, to help me work. I've got to kind of figure out the accounting system a little bit better. Like things are really starting to boom, you know, and we're going to have to get ready for that. So we're going to have to be able to learn and grow real fast. Okay. But it's exciting. It feels very, very good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, be ready to to call upon people in your life, especially if there's some aspect of this that you really want to take advantage of, but you're not really sure how to do it, seek out the knowledge. That's what the Princess of Swords is all about. Seek out the knowledge that you need, right? Don't despair. Don't lament that you don't know, you don't already have the knowledge. Go seek out the knowledge. Fill your mind with it, right? Similar to our universe card. Um, now, we talked about the hanged man. And now we don't want that anymore. We're done with the suffering, the lamentation, the self-sacrifice, the sort of the fatalistic view of things. We're done looking at the cups as half full or half empty. The problem is it's half. It doesn't matter which you could look at it as a pessimist or an optimist. It doesn't matter. The point is it's half. We're going to fill it up. In fact, it's going to be overflowing, right? So the hanged man is ready to turn things around and say, okay, I'm done with that. Let's get to work. Let's do it. Arms wide open, ready to receive the blessings. And of course, the high priestess is and has been there all along because there is a divine plan to everything. Everything does happen for a reason. And I think as soon as this process takes hold in your life, you're going to understand a little bit more what that plan is and what those reasons are. Remember at the beginning we said, yeah, I have faith. Everything happens for a reason. There is a divine plan but I don't know what it is. Well, the high priestess is giving you a little bit of wisdom to show you. See, there is a plan. And so it's a confirmation that there is a lot of synchronicity that's going to start happening in your life. A lot of serendipity. Okay? And it's important that you embrace that. And that you can you see that as the miracle. And that you, you learn from everything that's happened in your past. Right? Seeking out the knowledge. Seeking out the knowledge also from spirit. Spirit will tell you what the plan is. Spirit will tell you the reason for everything that's happened. 
You've got to be open and receptive to that message. Okay? Now, let's look at our mystery card. I'm very excited, kind of nervous about our mystery card because, you know, I want it to be an empress. I want it to be a ten of pentacles. I want it to be a nine or a ten of cups. I want it to be overflowing water energy. I kind of want it to be the fool. Um, a lot of possibilities here. What do you think it's going to be? Put your prediction in the comments, okay? All right, here we go. The lovers. Oh, that's good too. The lovers is really good. Um, the lovers, in some ways, it's sort of hanged man and high priestess coming together, right? Um, you know, merging as one and sort of our, our idea of um, self-sacrifice now we're receiving that blessing, right? Um, it's, um, it's karma, I think. This is also the card of inspiration. This is also the card, is, it's the lovers, right? This is that feeling of, you know, you're in your right life and everything is, this is the realization that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, you know? I thought that spirit hated me, right? I, th I was, you know, I was lamenting uh, my life and I was into this despair and this desolation. Now I realize what the divine plan was and I, I have this, this acknowledgement, this deep feeling that, I'm loved and I'm, I'm taken care of and this is right where I'm supposed to be, right? And so when we have the card like the lover's card, it's kind of like, it's that, um, well, it's that true love. It's just that, it's that feeling that everything is right with the world, okay? Because this, you think of, you know, you think of the lovers, right? Two people who are just, you know, insanely in love and that's the feeling. There is, there is no... There is no um, impurity in this at all. Everything is exactly perfect, okay? The lover's card is you, um, I think, uniting with spirit. It's the hanged man uniting with that high priestess. Yeah. You're uniting with your true self. It's this acknowledgement of your true path. It is an inspiration that wakes that hanged man up and says, I'm ready for blessings. I'm ready for the miracles. Bring them on, you know? Um, so it's inspiration. This is also, um, I think, a lot of communication, okay? I think it's a lot of communication between you and your true self or God, goddess, deity, spirit, ancestors, spirit guides, guardian angels, whatever you want to call it. It is a marriage between those two, right? It is the love affair that we have with our lives, you know? It's that feeling. And yes, it could be talking about a literal love affair, right? Um, that could be part of this, you know. Um, we could look at this whole thing as a romantic reading if you want. You know, we, it could be a love reading, right? This was a painful breakup, a painful bad relationship. We feel like we'll never feel love again, but we're not going to compromise our standards. Well, we're going to meet new people that are going to inspire us and we're going to realize, okay, there's a reason why I had to go through this really bad breakup because Spirit was trying to put me on the path to meet my true love, my actual soulmate. You see how easy that is? You see how easy romance readings are? Um, but the work itself is not easy. The stages of the phases of it are not easy. Okay? So if you want to, if you want to interpret this as that romance reading, by all means, all the, all the energy is here. The readings I do here are life readings. It's a love reading. It's a career reading. It's a creative reading, right? It's all of these things. Yeah, it's a life reading. And this could very well be existing on the romantic plane for you. And sometimes we go through these painful situations. We don't know why. What is the meaning? Why did spirit, like, why did I have to go through this? Because now I feel like it's never going to get better. I'm never going to find the right person for me. Okay? Well, I'm certainly not going to compromise who I am. So then I just, now I'm just going to suffer then. Now life is going to continue to get worse because I won't, I won't become somebody that I don't want to be just for the sake of a relationship, right? The Spirit's saying, look, you're going to meet with the people that you need to meet with. Doors are opening. You have to get out there into the universe, right? And Spirit will put you on the path of your soulmate. And you will understand the reason why 
this was a painful situation. Okay, these are things that sometimes we have to go through in order to find our true miracles, blessings, our true loves, our soulmates. Okay, so yeah, this could be a romantic reading for you. We're going to do an extended reading, and if you want to stick around for that, I think you should. There's a link up top, there's a link down below. New readings for Capricorn, Thursday and Sunday. Be sure to watch both readings. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. It is totally free doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Um, leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.